Welcome to the Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee's 11th meeting of 2019. Before we move to our first item on the agenda, can I remind everyone to switch off their mobile phones as they may affect the broadcasting system. The first item on the agenda is for the committee to take evidence on the Scotland Act 1998 Transfer of Functions to the Scottish Minister's Order 2019. I went back in time there. This morning, I'm delighted to welcome Paul Wheelhouse, Minister for Energy, Connectivity in the Islands. Good morning. Mark Christie, Policy Officer for Marine Scotland. Good morning. And Joanna Dingwall, the lawyer for the Scottish Government. Good morning to you all. Um, Minister, have you got anything to say up front in regard before I open it up to a, questions? A, a very brief opening comment, if I may, Convener. Thank, thank you very much and good morning, everyone. Um, uh, thank you for uh, the invitation uh, for me here uh, this morning to talk about the Scotland Act 1998 transfer functions to Scottish Ministers, um, etc. Order 2019. If I may briefly explain, the aim of this Section 30 order is to provide legal certainty surrounding the Scottish Minister's powers concerning environmental impact assessments, or EIA, in relation to electricity generating stations consented under Section 36 of the Electricity Act 1989 uh, and located in the Scottish part of the Renewable Energy Zone, or REZ. Um, this order came about following a routine regulatory review in 2017 during which we recognise the need for legislative clarity surrounding the Scottish Minister's powers concerning EIA functions in relation to electricity generating stations consented under Section 36 within the Scottish part of the REZ. This order clarifies that Scottish Ministers can exercise regulatory powers concerning EIA within the Scottish part of the REZ, and legal clarity in this area is important so as to prevent any ambiguity for decision makers and stakeholders and to ensure that the UK meets its obligations under EU law uh, to fully transpose the EIA directive. Uh, and my intention uh, is that this order will also minimise any risk of legal challenge. Uh, the order will have no impact on the offshore renewables industry or the way in which applications for offshore renewable energy applications are assessed or determined. Uh, thank you, and I, I look forward to any questions uh, on the order that members may have. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mark Ruskell, you have some questions, I believe. Just a, just a brief one, Convener, um, and it was more about where we go in the future uh, in terms of regulatory alignment. I mean, at some point, these regulations will, um, sorry, the, the directive and the, the source regulations will change in the European Union. And it's just what the government's plans are then for staying regulatory aligned with any changes that may come out of the European Union. That, that's, um, if, if I may convener, just respond by saying it's obviously a matter that we are currently discussing with UK ministers. Um, obviously, we're waiting clarity about what uh, the exit from the EU may or may not look like. If obviously, there's um, those of us who wish to remain in the EU still hope there's a slim chance we may remain in the EU. But if we are to leave, what the landscape looks like, and indeed uh, across a number of measures which affect the energy sector, uh, including and indeed environmental uh, impact uh, assessment and, and other matters affecting colleagues in the environment portfolio. Um, we are still seeking clarity about what long-term relationship UK wishes to have, but clearly the Scottish Government believes that we should maintain regulations that have been developed for good reason under our membership of the EU, and we certainly support retention of the EU ETS and other measures to try and support the development of the renewable energy sector. So I know that's an area that there's a great deal of, of consensus around, uh, both not, not just in the Scottish Parliament, but indeed uh, other, other uh, legislatures across the UK. And uh, you know we're keen to, to take that forward, but uh, clearly we are looking to try and ensure that the directive is adhered to. Um, and we, um, I know it may seem odd that we're doing this in the context of Brexit negotiations that are ongoing, uh, but we do not as yet know uh, when or, or even if the UK will leave the EU. And therefore, it's important that we do comply with the regulations that, that uh, uh, directives that are placed upon us. Yeah. Um, is there the potential for regulatory divergence then with the rest of the UK? going forward well i would, I would always take regulations. i would always take uh, convener with your forbearance um, i would always take the view that uh, that scotland should do what is right for for scotland that is why why i am um, in this parliament uh, to to do what's right for for the people and environment of scotland uh, but clearly uh, where there is a sense common sense to have alignment with the uk and the rest of the uk then that, that that is something we would take forward where it's in the interests of either the sector or indeed uh, the, the economy more generally, but we do obviously reserve the right to vary from a, uh, the, the UK-wide approach, where that is in the interest of the people or indeed the environment of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Stuart Stevenson. 
Uh, thank you, Kamina. Uh, just a, a related thing that you may or may not be briefed on, although hopefully Mark Christie might, might be, uh, which is whether this uh, similar issue might arise in relation to Section 37, uh, which is uh, similarly under the Electricity Act, uh, it provides ministers with the power to give consent to high voltage transmission. Um, I'm particularly interested in that, as I think the Kamina might similarly be uh, with the subsea cable that's proposed between my, the very edge of my constituency, possibly even into the, the community's constituency, with slight uncertainty, um, and, and Norway. And, of course, there's been uh, uh, recent discussions at Shetland and the Western Isles. Now, I'm unclear whether Section 37 gives the Scottish Minister's power over these subsea ones. I know it does for... Uh, power lines on land, uh, but but it strikes me that there might be a similar issue because there's surely EIAs associated with uh, consents under Section 37 as well. I, I certainly follow the logic um, that, that Mr. Stevenson has set out, and certainly for for, for the record that uh, we're very supportive of the North Connect project between Norway and and uh, uh, either Mr. Stevenson or. <laughs> Ms. Ms. Mar uh, Martin's um, constituency, um, but uh, we, we obviously, I can ap I appreciate the approach that um, Mr. Stevens has made and it probably would be logical to ask um, uh, Mark and, and um, Joanna to perhaps address that point, but maybe we can first direct that to Mark. Okay, um, it's something, that if it's okay with the committee, I would, I would like to look into that and get back to you if that's okay, mm -hmm. um, off the top of my head. I'm not sure whether that does apply to Section 37. It's not something that I personally have, have looked into. I don't know if Joanna knows any more. Or... With, with your permission, Convener, if, if I can ask Joanna Dingwall to address it. Sure. Yeah, I agree with Mark's sentiment here. I think it's something we would need to look into and write back to the committee about. I'm quite content with that, Convener. I just wanted to get it on the record okay. so that we have the opportunity. This was us. The Section 36 issue that we've identified was a specific loophole that was, uh, or, or, or area that needed clarity was required to, to, to be provided. That was identified in the review, and therefore that's why we're addressing it today. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? No? Well, thank you very much for answering those questions. Um, now I'm going to move on to consideration of the motion. Um, I'd like to invite the Minister to move motion S5M16387 in his name that the Environment, Climate Change and Land Reform Committee recommends that the Scotland Act 1998 transfer functions to Scottish Ministers Order 2019 be approved. Formally moves, Convener. And would you like to speak to the motion? Or I'm, I'm happy to, to rest, Convener. Would anyone else like to? No. Okay. The question is then that motion S5M16387 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. And so that is then agreed. Can I confirm that members are content for me to sign off the committee's report on these regulations? Agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Minister, and to, to, to you both. I will now suspend this meeting briefly. The third item on the agenda is to consider whether the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981, EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations 2019, that's SSI 2019 oblique 84, have been laid under the appropriate procedure. Members should note that these regulations have been laid under the negative procedure. Do we have any comments? Are you content for these uh, instruments to be considered under the negative procedure? Yes. If you're content, so the instruments will be considered as part of the next agenda item to which we turn. The fourth item on the agenda is to consider the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981 EU Exit Scotland Amendment Regulations uh, 2019, SSI 2019, oblique 84. Are there any comments? And we don't want to make any recommendations in relation to these instruments? No. no. Okay. Well, that concludes the committee's business in public today. At its next meeting on the 23rd of April, the committee will be considering the potential impact of the EU exit on the environment. 
And we will now move into private session. I ask that the public gallery be cleared as the public part of this meeting is now closed. <laughs>